I'm a 3D generalist and motion graphics generalist and video shooting generalist and whatever for a very long time. I remember doing After Effects before. There were even text layers. Yes, for you old folks that remember, you used to have to make a solid layer and apply an effect called text. Good heavens. Blocked those memories, didn't you? Yes. Well, yes. So that's how long I've been doing this. I learned, v I learned After Effects on VHS tapes. So before the internet existed, I'm just kidding. The internet was around. Um, but this presentation is also somewhat of a generalist presentation, in as much as I'll be showing some 3D stuff in Cinema 4D. I'll be showing some stuff in After Effects, and I'll even be showing stuff that's useful for people in, who are Premiere Pro editors or Final Cut editors who've never even touched After Effects. So this is going to be a mind-blowing experience for everyone, hopefully, or at least a mildly entertaining one. Hello, Internet, and maybe my children, if you're watching, and husband. Hello. Um, now, I've done a freelance work for lots of folks. I've done visual effects for Disney. I've done shoe commercials. I've done uh, stadium takeovers for like football stadiums with like the tiny little skinny, really long screens and all that kind of stuff. So over the years of doing all this crazy stuff, I've built up uh, some idea of some ways that you can save some time because time is money and we all want more of both. And uh, uh, so I'm going to, this whole presentation is called like ways to save time. I'm going to try to do that. But first, I'm going to waste your time by showing you some stuff that I've done. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, hopefully it'll be fun. I'm currently now the uh, community manager for Red Giant. So anytime you see Red Giant post stuff on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, it's probably me. And I have made uh, quite a few things to go out online because I'm very passionate about motion design and I love this stuff so much. And I want to help everyone else have as much fun as I'm having. So I like showing off things. So here is just a short little bit of some of the stuff that I have done uh, for the Red Giant social media channel recently. Hey, Michael Zalapski here for a Make It Thank you. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I like I like playing with stuff. Uh, hey, by the way, if you don't already, uh, you should fo probably follow Red Giant News on Twitter and Instagram or Red Giant Software if you're a Facebook person. Uh, most Tuesdays, we post some Tip Tuesdays, help you get your work done faster and better. And there's just a bunch of very handy, cool stuff on there. At least I hope so. Uh, so what I'm covering today, I'm covering stuff for editors. I'm covering stuff for motion designers. And I'm covering stuff for 3D artists. And the first thing I'm going to do is a project breakdown uh, of something that could potentially save you days of time and possibly thousands of dollars in render farm uh, costs. Uh, it's it's, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be, hopefully, a bit of a mind-opening experience for some of you. Uh, so we've got a producer. She's got a show about cars and mechanics in a garage who work in these cars. And she wants some nice, cool 3D car lower thirds. And she's like, you know, I want to be able to have these lower thirds. Come on. And it's got to have people's names. But I want, like, 3D and cool and cars. So here's what, uh, here's what I come up with. Uh, we'll show the intro. <laughs> Pardon all of those puns that might have accidentally slipped in there. Um, so uh, she's like, we want 3D cars. I'm like, cool. I can get you some 3D cars. Hang on, by the way. If you're an editor who is interested in Premiere Pro editing and Final Cut Pro editing and tips, hang on. I've got some tips for you later. But first, some Cinema 4D. Uh, for this particular project, I wanted a car. So type car in here and down here. Oh, look, a handy car model. Uh, she wanted something that was you know, kind of cool and sporty, but not too modern. 
So uh, we'll grab this little car here. It's cool. It's sporty. It's not too modern. And this car in the asset browser, my goodness, so handy. It's got controls I've already built into it. That's going to be useful to have. Look, the wheels already spin. What if we've got some? Uh, what if we've got some landscape? Maybe it wants to drive on some. It's going to drive on some bumpy landscape here. Make it, should we make it a little taller? Give the car some off-road capabilities? We should do that. So here in the car rig, we'll say, hey, I want you to go on this landscape here for me. And then we will drive you. Oh, hang on. I forgot. I need to do that. There we go. So we've got the landscape. We can move the landscape. Or we could move the car on the landscape. Car controls. There you go. Doo, doo, doo. Yay! Now, you might be saying to yourself, that's a cool tool to be handy right in there. Could I do it with my own car model? Why, yes, you can. If you go up into character and uh, start a whole character thing here, get the car out of the way for now, get the landscape out of the way, and you start here with the templates, there is a car rig right there. And you add your master components, the car main. You can add doors, hoods, trunks, and whatnot. And then you adjust the size of it and the binding, and then you hit animate, and you get all the kind of controls that you just saw. But anyway, let's get back to my car. Car, 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 car. No landscape. Undo, 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 undo car. All right, so we're going to have this car. It's going to drive in, and we'll have the camera like swoop around to like the name on the back. That sounds good. Uh, so that seems that seems good. Uh, let's make a quick little car paint material because this is a this one's been in the asset browser for a while. Uh, I believe this car rig was introduced in uh, S24 version of Cinema 4D, and so uh, these materials are all standard materials. So let's quickly uh, oh, not that one quickly build the Redshift material because we're going to want to render this in Redshift. Ah, go away. Create redshift material standard, and let's say we'll make it red, nice red sporty color, and we'll give the reflection some color too, make it kind of fun there. And uh, you know what? We need to put this on the car, first of all, would be probably a good idea. We'll just alt drag it on there to replace it on the car, and let's look in our redshift render view. Uh, we probably should have a light as well while we're at this. Uh, let's see. Let's just do a, let's just do a dome light. I was going to do like a sky thing, but we don't need a sky. We just need a light. All right. So we've got our car, got our material, and let's put. I just do right. Oh, alpha RGB. There we go. All right. We want some nice flakes for car paint. Flakes is spelled with a K, not a C. You silly goose. Put that bump map on there. And probably need to, oh, look, attributes handily right here in our, in, our, uh, in our node editor. Let's make the scale significantly smaller. Let's say 0.1, maybe. There we go. And get some nice detail in there. And then let's go back to our standards material. And we've got, let's see, let's add some more roughness to this one here. And then we will add some bit of a clear coat on top of it, maybe. Yeah, it looks like a pretty good car paint. OK. So we've got our car. We've got a car paint. All we got to do now is put the name on the back, and we're good. But hang on a second. We need to do lots of these, because there's more than one person. Now, uh, the producer has also decided that she wants the same sort of look for all the guests that come into the garage, the customers who come in like, hey, I want my car worked on for blah, blah, blah. So now we're going to have to have names. And of course, commercial breaks, you need to have the names of the people on the who are on the show back after every commercial break. So she's going to want the color to change and the name to be able to be changed for however many times the names show up in the TV show, which is, I don't know, probably what 20 or 40 lower thirds may show up in the show. So what about changes? Are we going to have to make a new Cinema 4D project file for every one of these new names, and then queue them all up in the render queue, and then, what? no, I say no. That would take too long, because then what if they want to make a new car model? What if they want a new lighting setup? Then you have to re-render all of those dozens and dozens of names? No, I think not. I have a better idea. Now, some of you more experienced folks in Cinema 4D might be thinking, hey, there's this lovely take system. 
And indeed, there is. Darlene Sanchez covered it in her presentation earlier today. Scroll back, live streamers, and catch it later. Those of you here have to, have to go back onto the YouTube channel. But she talked a little bit about the take system, and it's a very handy tool. When it first came out, I used it on a project immediately, and it saved me literally days of work. It lets you override certain things. Anyway, great and handy, but I can do you an even better one than that on this project. I'm going to take it where we can edit not just the color, but also the name inside of Premiere Pro. Yeah, that's right. We're not even going to be doing the controls in After Effects. I'll build them in After Effects. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you'll find out here in just a second. But we're going to, first of all, uh, we need to get this ready. So I've got a slightly more done version of the scene. We've got the car, drives in. Nice little shake there as it comes to the stop. Er, turns around, bam. So we'll take that logo off and we'll put the person's name there. So we will put ourselves a little bitty null object. Here into our scene, we'll put it in the car model area, probably. Really good idea. And we'll put it roughly where it's going to need to go, back here. Doesn't matter. You know what I'm doing. Put it there. Right click on the null. And we'll took uh, the render, render tags, Cineware. And this will let us get that 3D data once we are inside After Effects, which is very handy. Also. We're going to want a mat for uh, what needs to be changed. In this case, the color of the model. So I'm going to want a mat for this body color. We'll go with a puzzle mat. And we'll use, uh, you can use object IDs or material IDs, uh, either way. But you set up, so you got red, green, blue. You can make as many puzzle mats as you want for as many different things as you want. So we'll have that all set up very handy. Then on our render settings, we just need to make sure we save it out. Oh, by the way. Since this is supposed to be a presentation on saving you time, right here is a big time saver. You notice how I don't have any file names or file paths in here. It just says, hey, I'm in a C40 projects folder, go back a folder, and then down into a Cinema 4D renders folder, then into a folder for the project, and then the file is going to be named the project name, because I always save an increment. So every, every couple hours, I'll hit you know, the keyboard shortcut to save an increment, so I got version 01, version 02, version 03. So I always know what the render comes from, and I don't have to name or f go find where I rendered it to. It's already preset for me. Please set yourself up some takes and tokens, and you'll save yourself time. Right here, look. You can have it named by the date, by the time you did it, by the render engine you used, by the camera you used, by the uh, take that you used. Don't waste time naming files. Have it do it for you. All right, then down here, we've got alpha, because it's going to be a lower third. And we need to tick on to save the 3D data for After Effects. Those are very important because we're taking this into After Effects to build out our rig. So there you go. That's how you get that set up. So then we just need to hit render. Then we can import it into After Effects, which is what I'm going to pull up right now. I do not want to say thank you very much for checking. So uh, we're going to go into After Effects, and we're going to build something that is called a motion graphics template, which is uh, something that you can then pass on to someone who wants to edit in, uh, in uh, Premiere Pro. Uh, I call it a Mogurt for short. That's what we've got right here, car for Mogurt. When you import, let me show you how to import, actually. That's probably an important step. So when you want to make that thing, you get all your whatnots. And you also get an AEC file when you render. And you import that AEC file, and it brings in all your information, including, handily, your null objects that you've named. Here's the badge for the back of the car. So when it moves, it goes with everything. It also brings in lights, so it makes your comp set up very handy. So you got it zooming in. We've got our car. We've got our null object. We want stuff. And we need to change the color of the car. Let's do that first. So we've got our puzzle mat down here. And I'm going to apply to this puzzle mat. Uh, I'm going to apply effect because I just need to change the hue, saturation, and lightness of the car body. So I'm going to do, uh, let's see. Set channels. I'll just do that. There's a couple different ways you could pull this mat off, but I'm going to do this one. I'm going to just set the layers alpha to the green channel. So that way, pull in just that. Ta da! And then I will apply. 
I'm using Colorista to change the color of the car, and I will show you why here in just a second. But as you can see now, if I do this, it's going to change. Let's see, I'll do the exposure. Change it on everything. So rather than apply it to the car, I'm going to apply it to an adjustment layer. And I'm going to tell that adjustment layer, hey, you're going to use this car layer as your track mat. So this will only affect the car. So let's say let's take the saturation all the way down. We want to make a white car. Turn the exposure up, everything blows out. So we will use the highlight roll off. So now we've got a lovely white car. Or maybe we would like to have a black car. It also works. Maybe we want colors. We can do whatever we want. But now, how do you build the Mogurt? Window Essential Graphics Panel. You can drag whatever you want, effect Y, like effect controls here, up here. So we'll say, hey, saturation. We'll say, let's see, car saturation. And we want the hue. So we'll call it car hue. And then the exposure. Where are you at, exposure? I'll just double click on you. There you are. Exposure. Car. Uh, we'll call this brightness. Or it's a hue lightness. We'll call it lightness. Lightness. I can spell. People, I don't know. If you've, ever, if you've never presented, you don't understand how difficult it is to correctly spell things when people are watching you. Uh, we also need the name for the back of the car. We don't have a name back there yet. So let's, put, let's make a name for ourselves. And we will make it, uh, let's see. Let's make it a nice car-y kind of font. Uh, let's see, let's do coquette is a nice kind of thing. We'll call it, let's see, um, let's see. Uh, audience, I need audience suggestion. What's, uh, who, who, wants to, who wants their name to be on the back of this car? Anyone, name, car? Yeah, okay, what's your name? Vern. And we'll just, you know what, this will be the Vern. We'll just, just make it Vern. There we go. And we'll put that on the back of the car. So we will make this car a 3D layer. And we will say, hey, I want to parent you to the badge one here. And if you hold shift, it'll move things to where they go. Huzzah. Uh, I probably want to center this text. In fact, I definitely do. And I need to rotate it 90 degrees this way. And should probably make it a little bit smaller. There we go. Now, there are a different, bunch of different ways you could be doing the 3D text on the back of the car. You could use a plugin like Element 3D or Trap Codes Mirror to make 3D letters. You could use uh, the Cinema 4D renderer that's inside of After Effects. But because this moves so fast, because it zooms in and boom, I think we can get away with not even doing that. I'm just going to trim the layer. Like right around here is about where it's going to show up. So I'm going to say, hey, Alt, bracket. The name is going to start there. And we're just going to have it show up. Uh, you know what? We want these to continue, because the lower third is going to be on screen for a lot longer than that. Uh, but instead of trying to finagle with weird things, there is a handy time function after effects, freeze on last frame. And now we can just have everything go on forever. Lovely. So we've got the name. And I'm going to use a very handy effect that looks nice and 3D on here called Luster. Gives it a nice 3D luster to objects below. Oh, I do not want to put it on that layer. I want to put Luster on the text layer. Not on all of the layers. Luster on the text layer. And I'm going to choose a handy preset. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Red Giant Universe has many, many, many presets for all of the effects. And now they are cloud, cloud, cloud ones as well. So we, they can be delivered, instead of having a like massive install file with a bajillion presets, there's now going to be ones that can be delivered to you in the internet all the time. Very handy. And we're going to use this emblem one. I think it's very handy. We'll apply that preset. Now, uh, something that you may or may not know in After Effects is that text layers, uh, especially when they're 3D, are something called continuously rasterized. It's a vector, a vector object that then has to become pixels because After Effects is a pixel-based pixel compositor. But what that means is that effects such as luster that use position information, so like the source color here, this gradient that drives luster, uh, when this layer moves around, these source points are not going to move because the layer is being continuously rasterized to the size of the comp. So 
when it moves through 3D space, these uh, gradient driving parameters are going to move around. Perhaps you might think, that's not what you want. Uh, but it is, because when it moves through that gradient, it makes it look like it's reflecting better. So our little cheat is working out so well for us. So we've got this lovely fake 3D text that looks like it's for all the world, like it's real 3D, sitting on the back of the car. Fantastic. Uh, now, I will open the, finish, the more finished file, because I don't need you to sit here all day. This is, in fact, a presentation about saving you time, and I'm going to be trying to do that. So there's a more finished version. Uh, we've got our car. Zooms in. I need to make it so we can see the whole thing. First and last name, uh, I used uh, source rect at time expression so that when this name changes to be longer or shorter, it will this little box will stretch to fit it. I've also cheekily added a shadow underneath the car using just a, <laughs> using just a solid layer and adding a blur to it and parenting it to the car controls. Like it's dumb. It's so dumb. But it, uh, you know, it works. So all you have to do when you want to get this out to Premiere Pro is you hit Export Motion Graphics Template. And that's, that's really it. That's, that's all you got to do. And then when you open it in Premiere Pro, you're going to have those controls. And I'm going to show you that uh, right now. Once you're in Premiere Pro, you've got, let's see, where are we starting here? Oh, perfect. We will go into Car Show Begin. We've got our intro here. I'm going to mute that so we don't need to hear it. And let's see, we'll do, sorry here. And when you want to, it, it, bring your motion graphics template in here, I should show you that you should go into, you'll probably be in like your editing or whatever. You go to captions and graphics, and it pulls up this whole essential graphics thing here, and you've got templates. And then you want to install your Mogurt, yeah, just click that. Boom. And you pick your Mogurt, and it installs it. I have already installed it. It is right. Car, car, car. Car lower third is here. You just drag it in. And then here inside Premiere Pro, once we load our motion graphics template, we can then go to the Edit tab and select our Mogurt. Let's trim it down to fit over the top of that shot. And let's see, uh, someone else, name, name, name. Someone, audience, I need a name. David, David. hi, I see your name tag. David, and then uh, let's see, uh, and we'll have your last name be that. There we go. And let's make this car, uh, what's your favorite color, David? Yellow. All right, we'll make a yellow car. Make it a brighter yellow. Make it a saturated yellow. And there you go. Just like that, you're editing it here in Premiere Pro. Now, uh, if you're like, hey, there's more than one person in this intro. Indeed, we've got this chap here. Uh, just so you know, audience, I'm about to ask for another name and color. So anyone want to be this dude? Who wants to be this dude? Anyone? 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 No one? Fine. I will just name him myself. He'll be Sean. Cody. Nope, like that. And he is going to have a. Oh, hang on. I'm on this one. You have to remember to select the right thing. Sean, Cody. And we'll change the hue of his car. He'll be pink. It'll be dark pink. Yeah, anyway, you get the point. All we have done is, like, very so simply made all the changes that have to happen now in the hands of the editor. So if they're wanting to match, say, the color in the background of this shot, maybe the, the producer's like, hey, I want you to match that car color. All you got to do is select the right one. And you can just go do 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 Match, matchy, match. You get the idea. You know how to use hue controllers. Uh, now, let's say the producer's like, hang on, I want a different car or maybe just simply a different typeface or a different font, all you have to do is import your new one with whatever changes you've made, whether you swapped out the model, swapped out the font, and you just drag it with your Alt key held over onto one of them, and it says, hey, do you want to replace all the other instances of this graphic in all sequences? Why, yes, I flip and do. Then you hit yes, and it replaces them, and hey, we've got a different name on there. And you'll notice it keeps the colors and the new font, because I changed that one too. But it keeps the colors. And whatever changes you've made, I've changed both of them to say Sean. But anyway, it doesn't matter. That's so simple. So let's say there's 20 names in a show, and there's 20 episodes in a season. That is math, 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 400 renders you would have been doing out of Cinema 4D. Now you've done one. Yes, one render versus 200. You're very welcome. I've saved you days of time. All we've done, build Cinema 4D, make ourselves a mat, pass the controls to After Effects, and you are good to go. 
Oh, I do want to point out, before I go on to the next thing I wanted to show you, is this little uh, cars and effects thing here at the end is a very fun bunch of universe tools to make it come in and do that little thing. This whole thing is just text with box bokeh for cute little r rolling tires blur thing I got going on there. It's so universe box bokeh, then heat wave to add just a little bit of like blurry kind of exhaust heat going on, camera shake to make it move up and down like it's all got, got energy going on, and luster, of course, for its lovely uh, car badge looking effect. So next up, uh, that was a nice long, good 22, five minutes worth of tip. Now I'm going to start going with much shorter time-saving tips. Uh, this one is more, uh, more for editors, uh, I'm going to say. This one's going to be more for editors because this, I'm going to be doing it uh, for the most part here in After Effects, but this is something that you could do in Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro or Avid Media Composer or DaVinci Resolve or really any host where uh, any host where uh, Universe can be a, can be can be had. So, say you want to get yourself a lovely uh, ambient like background color going on. Like you just need a background. It's got to be just kind of like there. You want you want it to be kind of classy. And Universe has uh, in it fractal background, which is a handy tool. Uh, there's a bunch of presets uh, they we've got here. And you can use universe fractal background to have like a seamlessly looping background, whatever length you want. And it's got some nice, uh, some nice presets here, all kinds of stuff. But you know, maybe uh, you don't really want like a fractally look. You want something a little more ethereal, but you still want it to be nice and uh, looping. So I've got fractal background here, and it, it loops, and it spins and whatnot. But you want to add just a bit of like something to it. Uh, might I suggest Chroma Town? Chroma Town uh, takes basically your footage, or in this case, your fractal background, and then another copy of it, and then it either moves it, or spins it, or blurs it, or camera distorts it, or whatever, and then interpolates between those two versions of your thing with chromatic gorgeousness. It's, it's got like a lot of really cool stuff to it. So you've got this really cool like little ethereal background going on. That's one way of doing it. Here's another one I made, just kind of like smooth, calm. Maybe this is for a yoga video. You're just chill. And uh, this is just gorgeous, looping, beautiful chromaness. Uh, also, another thing you can use with it is something called Spectralicious. Uh, for those who are unaware, uh, Spectralicious, Spectralicious is a uh, six-point gradient in After Effects. You've got six points. You can move around and do whatever you'd like with. You make them colors, and you can pick how much they spread between the points. So it can be like harder or softer spreads. And I found uh, a lot of people don't know about it, because when you're looking for a six-point gradient, you don't think, ah, spectralicious, that's what I'm after. But it is spectralicious and beautiful. And I said something was so spectral, a bit of heat wave and chroma town, and it gives you this kind of cool little look. I've also got this gorgeous little spectralicious thing. And it's also like that. Lovely, gorgeous, beautiful. So let me show you making some from scratch, one from scratch real quick, just so you can see how fun this is. Composition settings, eh, that's fine. Whatever, that's good enough. We'll do a solid layer in here. We'll make it so you can see it. We'll add, let's see, let's do, let's do Spectralicious. I like Spectralicious. Spectralicious. We'll apply that. Let's pick a preset. Uh, let's go with, let's do this one. This one's a fun preset. Uh, you know what, no, let's not do that one. That one's too crazy. Let's do, let's do Lights in the Fog. I like that one. That one's, that one's, that one's lovely. Lights in the Fog. And then we'll just, uh, you can animate these to do whatever you want motion-wise, underneath. And then we'll just do Chroma Town, right on top of that. And let's pick a preset. Let's do Chroma Explosion. And let's bump up the quality. This is how many uh, copies there are. So you can like three copies of it. And the more copies you have, the smoother that blend goes. So there you go. Let's do. Let's move our end one up a little bit. Yeah, that's how easy it is to get yourself an, a nice, lovely, ambient background thing using just a couple of tools there in the universe. And speaking of Spectralicious, let me hop back into Premiere Pro uh, because uh, you may have noticed when I typed in Spectralicious just a second ago that it was also available as a transition. And indeed it is. I'm going to switch to the effects workspace. 
Let me slip into more room. And yeah, Spectralicious is available as a transition. You might think, why would you want that? Well, it's really kind of cool. It takes the color of your footage and makes it the color of the gradient points, and then it randomly moves the gradient points around, and then it crossfades between them on both sides. So you get this kind of cool look where it blurs between your two shots. Um, speaking of transitions, uh, anyone in the audience want to answer me, what is the best transition you can use in video editing? Anyone? What? Star wipe is the correct wrong answer. Uh, cut. No, star wipe is also an excellent choice, but uh, the cut is obviously your best. Uh, your best transition is a cut. But sometimes a cut's not appropriate, even though it is generally speaking the best. Uh, if you're wanting to move the audience from one scene to another, from one time to another, or from one thought to another, you kind of want to have some kind of transition besides just a cut, most likely. And uh, this is one fun way to do it. Universe also has a uh, warp transition, which I quite like. It gives you kind of a cool little movement. Uh, there's stretch wipe, which is a good one. It's kind of does a little slide out there. And there's a bunch of controls for for all of these transitions uh, and presets for them all. Speaking of saving time, I'm going to scooch ahead here to, let's see, uh, that one's a good one. I'm going to show you the importance of a preset. If you go to, that was a good one too. Uh, if you go to this one, oh, here, I'll pause for a second. Time saving. If you want to just quickly cut between two things before you transition, hey, there's flicker cut. It goes blah, blah. Flicker cut, and it gives you cool controls. Like you can add some cool like noise and extra contrast to give it a little bit extra punch on that transition point. But imagine having to make all those cuts. Then someone's like, "Can you make that transition go a little bit longer?" And you're like, "I have to cut more or shorter, and I have to undo my cuts." You just apply flicker cut, and it just does it. But uh, right here, we got a lovely transition called color stripe. Not really cool but very good for a corporate gig. So if you're doing one of those, you know, you got one for the meal, one for the real. If you're doing one of the ones for a meal and the corporate's like, we want our brand colors to swipe across. Uh, yeah, so you can do your brand colors. And instead of having to customize the colors under this, uh, under your color section every time, just hit save preset. Like, I want to name this uh, Maxon NAB Sw color bars. Whatever. Put them in uh, your own custom categories if you've wanted to go crazy. And you hit save. And then the next time you want to apply that transition, say, let's put it uh, over here. Instead of that transition, we want a color wipe. So we're just like, hey, let's do universe transitions, color stripe. We'll put that on there. And it's got these colors default. Let's pick our preset that we made. There it is. Apply. And it, there you go. Boop. Brand colors, my brand. Uh, Channel Surf is another effect like Spectralicious that has a name that doesn't quite tell you what it does. And it's very handy if you've got like TV screens in your 3D scene and you want to like change channels from one to the other. Uh, Channel Surf is a good one, is it surfs between the channels. So that's another handy transition to have uh, when you want uh, TVs to look TV -y. So there's uh, some tips on things that might make your work go faster. Let's talk about Magic Bullet looks. Uh, I find Magic Bullet looks to be very useful in my 3D work. Uh, but I want to point out something for editors and color correcty people. That's something that will also save you time. So uh, before uh, this recent release of Magic Bullet looks, uh, the strength slider was uh, useful in some situations. But if Magic Bullet looks had like lens distortions or things like that that really move pixels around, uh, the, old, the old strength slider would be more like this, where it would just kind of fade the effect. So you'd get like double arms, which is no good when you've got dancers. Like It would just kind of double the images up. But now, instead of that, it just nicely and smoothly just transitions between it. So when, the, when your client's like, I want it filmy, and you make it really filmy and gross, and they're like, uh, but less than that. You can just easily save time, back off with one slider. All of these effects have their, have their own strength sliders, and they all back off all together. Saves you some time. Now, I also want to talk about how Magic Bullet looks works for enhancing your 3D renders. Uh, 3D renders, uh, you know, they come out of the computer, and they're perfect. And you want to add some of that analog warmth. Uh, I currently live near Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA. And I know someone who worked for years and years and years in a recording studio there. And people said his mixes, he was, he, he was like the guy who did the mix your master. He said his mixes are so good. They just have this like, uh, to them. They couldn't really describe it, but they had a feeling. And the trick was he would feed his digital, you know, his giant digital board. He would feed that mix onto a cassette tape and then back into the computer. 
So he would get that cassette kind of warbly analog warmth into it. No one knew his secret sauce. It was just he put it onto tape first and then back into the computer. Well, in this case, we can simulate a lot of that. So I've got the 3D render here. And this 3, 3D render, it, you know, it looks fine, but it's, you know, it's, it's cute, it's fun, but it's cold. And you can add some lovely magical looks. This is a slightly extreme example because we are streaming online and sometimes the stream doesn't show stuff well. So these are going to be some slightly extreme examples. But I'll show you the tool chain that I like to use uh, on some of our things. And I'll kind of walk through some of them real quick. I've got optical diffusion twice, you say? Indeed. And I'll explain that here in a second. But let me turn, let's see, that one off, that one off, that one off, that one off. You know what? I'm just going to turn all of them off. And I'll, you know what? I'll go to optical diffusion. You're like, why do you have two? I like two. I've got one that's kind of tight and you know, small size, a little bit glowy. And I've got another one that's like wider and washes out over the whole thing. So it kind of gets some of that kind of grungy, like it's filmed on an old film thing, some clarity to bring back some detail. And then a little tiny bit of chromatic aberration. Don't go crazy. Some lens distortion, especially useful with camera moves. It gives your 3D render just a little bit more of a, it was filmed with a camera look, which I find very useful. And a little bit of edge softness to take off any chromatic aberration edginess that might be there. And then Mojo, just because I thought it punched up the colors nicely on this particular shot. Some halation, which I will cover here in just a second. Uh, more specifically, I love the halation in Magic Bullet Looks. Uh, as far as I know, it is the best halation effect out there. And Renoiser. All these toys, to toys tools together uh, work very nicely. I do want to point out one thing. Um, in Magic Bullet Looks, if you are like fiddling with stuff and you want to go back to the defaults, all you have to do, this also works in the Trap Code Designer, by the way, is double click on the property and it goes back to its default, which is very handy. So, but, so there's that. Very handy. All right, we are going to get out of that. And I'll show another thing uh, that is useful here. You know, I'll show a couple more tools. This one is a render that looked like this before looks came along. Looks added a bit of like just a lot more warmth and color to these shots. Uh, same with this one. I used a lot. Oh, I do need to talk with a LUT. I know you talk with a LUT. Um, so let's say. You use LUTs in your 3D work, or any of your work in general. You're like, I, I, I've got LUTs that I want to use. But searching through LUTs is so hard, because you just got the file name. Well, right here in Looks, you've got LUTs. You can just like, oh, look at that. You can get a preview of what your LUT might look like without having to, without having to like apply it first. You can just see it and just through it. Now you're like, but I have my LUTs that I like the most. I have my favorite LUTs. I would like to have my LUTs. In here, you can load a LUT. Let's see if I have some here. I do. Um, let's load. You know what? Let's load this cold light of day one right here. And then you've got your own custom LUTs down here. There's handy cold in this custom. And you're like, hang on. I don't want to have to import every single one of my many, 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 many LUTs. Oh, show and explore. There we go. We've got a little custom folder that that's in. So you take all of your LUTs, that I'm sure you have many of, because uh, I certainly do. And these are not all of them. All you have to do is drag all of them in there with the folder structure intact. And then you'll have little categories here where this says custom. And you can just fold them up. So fold this one up. These are all the default ones, custom. And then you'll have all of your folders of LUTs in their own folders. And you can just look at them and see what it's going to be before you even touch them. Fantastic time saver which I, was what I promised at the beginning. All right. Uh, besides the LUTs, I also want to talk about this shot. Now, this one is a pretty cool little shot. I did not make it. Someone else did. Uh, and I want to show you another tool for enhancing your 3D renders, also very useful for your footage, you editors, is Universe Finisher. You apply that, and it has this enhanced contrast that just helps bring out just a little bit of extra detail, not unlike the clarity effect in Colorista or in Magic Bullet Looks. But I also want to say, if you take this into negatives, I don't have an example of this, but if you have a s editors, if you have a sky that's looking a little bit eh, you swing this enhanced contrast into the negative, and it sometimes makes your sky look more interesting, which is very handy as well. Uh, now, I do definitely want to show off, uh, I wanted to show, so I was going to talk about renoiser and halation. So I've got uh, them here on this adjustment layer. I just want to move in uh, to really talk about what that does. Uh, there are a lot of grain tools out there in the world, and the renoiser tool 
that is inside Magic Bullet Looks, and by itself as a tool in Magic Bullet Suite, is unlike a lot of them. Um, a lot of green options out there, like if someone's like, oh, I got this footage that someone shot on actual film, and I can just overlay it on my footage and have real film grain on my footage. Yes, but it doesn't act like real film grain on your footage. Real film grain isn't just a texture overlaid. It is the little particles of chemical on the film that are the different sizes and react differently chemically. So what Magic Bullet Renoiser does is it takes your image and then rebuilds it out of film grain. So you see on the edges of the text here, if I turn off looks and back on, you see it's just got that imperfection that you get out of actual real film grain because it has been moved around and completely rebuilt out of the film grain. So it's my favorite grain tool because it works super fast. Like everything's already rendered here, which is handy. All right. Now, there's a lot of tips there for editors, a lot of tips there for 3D folks. And now I'm going to talk about particles. I love particles. I love particles so much. Uh, I use X particles in Cinema 4D all the time. And of course, trap code particular. I'm going to show off some, I know we had some X particles earlier today, so I'm going to show off some trap code particular stuff today. Now, let me see what I got here. I've got, I want to show just a few tips. So we will do, this one here, I'm going to talk about this shot. So this shot here has a kind of a cool like depth to the particles. There's actually a few things I want to talk about here. Uh, I used a cute little trick on this uh, to make the particles do this. So you know how in trap code part you know what, I'm just going to show you from scratch. I think that might work even better. Do I have it in my AE projects or do I have to build it from scratch? Ah, I don't have to show it. There we go. Don't save that one. So in trap code particular, you have the option here of having your particles be screen blending mode, which means they get lighter as they get over top of each other. But as you may have noticed here, these particles get darker as they get over top of each other. What I have very cleverly done is inverted my particles. So here's the native particle as they come. And then I just invert it so the light becomes dark. And of course, solid composite and my very favorite glow, optical glow, over top of it. So you get this really cool like depth feeling to them. You just have to remember that you want to keep your colors exactly opposite of what you want them to be in the final. Another thing I want to talk about is this fairly complex looking thing. Let me sh show it again in my output for the real, blah, 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 not moving. So you can actually just appreciate it. This is all one emitter producing this all the way over here in green, this in red, and this in blue, how is one emitter being in three places at once? It's the magic, the magic of light emitters. So in Trapcode Particular, under the emitter section, uh, you just say lights. And then any light that's named emitter uh, becomes your, well, emitter. OK, I lied. I, like, I didn't lie, but there's two systems, and this one is tech is emitting from all these particles. So technically, there's thousands of emitters. But there's really only one emitter driving the whole thing. This system is coming off of this system, and this system is coming off of the lights. So you can control in After Effects. You can say, hey, I want this uh, one here. I want it to be a typically different color. Okay, let me take off the invert so you can actually see colors that make sense. All right, so this light here is the yellow one. So it's these yellow particles over here. And we'll say, hey, I want these to be, instead of yellow, I want them to be, I don't know, red. And so that light color then becomes the color of all those particles and let it simulate from this point up to this point. And there you go. So you can take, you can do the position, you can do uh, the spread of how, uh, how wide it's going by how the cone angle of your spotlight is. So say, uh, let's turn off all these child particles. We don't need to see them for what I'm talking about. If we want to spread the cone angle out of that emitter, we can say, hey, that one's going to spread real wide. Uh, you'll get a wider spread. And then let's say, hang on, we can also do how many are coming off of this by its intensity. So you can say, hey, I want to have just more particles coming off of that one. And so you get more particles coming off of it by bumping up the intensity of the light. I put that up to way too many particles, but you get the idea. More particles coming off of it. And it just gives you a lot of control. And then if someone wants, if you need to make a change to something, you only need to change how many particles coming off of one emitter. You only need to change in one spot, and you've got 
them everywhere. Uh, and in the recent update to Trapcode Particular, light emitter scenes can render up to three times faster, which, again, saves you time. Uh, there's one more particle thing I would like to break down, but I'm not quite have enough time for it. I'm going to try. I'm going to try real quick. Let's see. I will just, I'll just talk about it instead of, sh no, I want to show it. I want to show it. I got time? All right. Well, I'll show it first. Uh, this is for uh, a concert supporting an uh, environmental thing. Um, it's trying to save some coral reefs. So it's rocking for the reef. I don't know how well that's coming through. In situ, this came, you could read that very well, but it's, I know it's maybe dark on this screen. But So we've got a bunch of cool, complex-looking stuff going on here. And I want to show you how to make all of this happen. It's really, really sneakily simple. And as it opens, I will tell you how this works. So this uh, thing uses uh, five different particle systems. So let's just, you know what, let me talk about the ground first, because the ground is, again, stupidly simple. Uh, you could look for a 3D model of the ground, or you could make one, or you could just grab uh, trap code mirror and just make some geometry based on a fractal, and then you've got, and then works with the After Effects camera, and you've got, and works with the After Effects lights, and you, so you've got like a C ground without you actually having to do much of anything, and you could just do it right in After Effects. Very handy. All right, so particular. Let's talk about how we make these particles do the thing. So let's uh, let's let's see particle particles particles. There you are. So we've got the primary system, and the primary system is these particles that are shooting out towards the text. And we've got this hidden system called text prey. It's based off of this text layer here. And it's, spar it's spawning a bunch of particles inside the shape of the text, and they're hidden. But they are set in the flocking system in particular as prey, but they don't flee. They stay put no matter what happens. They're going to just sit there and just like deal with the predator coming after them by just nothing. Then we've got Reef, which is, I'll scoot forward a little bit. It's these green particles. They spawn when the prey, which is this system, launches on the, uh, or the predators, launches on the prey. And when, so when the prey dies or ends their life, uh, they spawn these green particles. And the green particles are set to move and then slow down. So you get this cool like growth effect where they're like, they come on, I'll show it in the player, it might be easier. But they come on, and then they kind of like, came in. Came in. I'm just going to go to the player and play it. Be faster rocking for the reef. Where they come on, and they kind of grow. So they just have a tiny bit of random motion that then tails off as they die, or as they live, I mean. As they live, it tails off. And then uh, I also have this uh, coral from reef set up. So when these spawn, they have a, I told this system, spawn from the green ones, but you only have a 2% chance of spawning. And that system, so every, every two out of 100 of these green particles spawns these purple particles going up with just a bit of movement on them. So you get this kind of like stuff growing out of the reef looking thing. And then of course I have these gorgeous, this gorgeous trail system, which is what gives you that lovely little, uh, like smoky look there, and then with a bit of a uh, bit of a color grade and some glow over the top of everything, you get this cool rock in the reef look. And I have more cool stuff I would like to show you, but I'm at 50 minutes. I want to make sure I leave any time for questions. So today we covered taking your Redshift renders into Premiere Pro and changing their colors and the text without you having to do 400 renders. You only have to do one, saving you potentially days of work. We covered making cool transitions very very quickly in literally less than a minute.